Okay, we're continuing on with optimization, and this is problem number eight. And you've been asked to design a one liter can shaped like a right cylinder, right circular cylinder. What dimensions would use the least material? So let's look at what we could have here. We could have a cylinder that's tall and thin, right here. And we could have one that's short and wide, like a tuna fish can. Okay? And you said you've been asked to design it, but you want to use the least material. So when they're talking least material, um, you're talking about the outside or the surface area, if you will. The surface area of this right cil circular cylinder. Sorry, I can't say that too fast. So the first thing I want to talk about is what is a liter, all right? And one liter is 1,000 cubic centimeters. So if you look at that, that looks like volume to me, okay? So they want you to have a one liter can, and they're giving you um, that you have to have that, so that is going to be our constraint, and they want to have the least material. So let's look at what we can have here. So our constraint of this problem is the volume, all right? That means that the volume of this has to equal 1,000 cubic centimeters. Well, how are we going to do that with a formula? So let's look at this. Let's look at the shape of this. I'll use this for the formula. In order to find the volume of anything, you're going to look at the area of the base, and you're going to multiply it by the height. Okay? And the area of the base is a circle, so basically the formula for the volume is going to be pi r squared h, because there's our circle times the height, and we know it has to equal 1,000. So there's our constraint. All right, now what we want or I, we need to have is the surface area has to be at a minimum, okay? Or you want to make it, you know, with the least material, all right? So here's our constraint, and what's the other equation we call it? If it's not a constraint, it is our objective. So our objective is to have the least material. So we're talking surface area. Now let's look at how you find the surface area of this. So I'm going to use this one down here. So we're going to pretend there's a label right around this, okay? Because surface area, all right, is going to be the top and the bottom. So that's kind of easy. The top and bottom look like circles. So we have pi r squared, and there's going to be two of them. So that's going to take care of the top, and it's going to take care of the bottom. Now what is that around there? Now if this was a label that you peeled off, so let's peel that label off that can. It's going to look like a rectangle. So this is going to be basically the height of the can. So right here is our height. But then what is this distance here? Well, if this goes all the way around the can, this is really right here our circumference. Okay? And circumference is pi d. That can be here. But since everything has an r in it, we can call it circumference is 2 pi r. Alright? So, what is the surface area? The surface area is going to be 2 pi r squared, so that's the top and bottom, plus 2 pi r times the height. So there is our surface area equation. Alright, so now what we're going to do is take this constraint equation that we have right here, and we want to somehow put it in our objective, so we need to solve for something. And it looks like the easiest thing to solve for would be height. So I'm going to say the height is going to equal 1,000. Let's make that look a little nicer. The height is going to equal 1,000 divided by pi r squared. So this right here, excuse me, this right here, I'm going to put in this spot right here so that our whole equation will be in R's. So our surface area, so I've actually plugged it in there, is going to be 2 pi R squared plus 2 pi R times 1,000 over pi R squared. All right, so let's continue down to make this. I haven't done any derivatives. I'm just coming up with the equations. So I have the surface area is 2 pi R squared plus if you'll notice, the r is going to cancel out here, so I have just one r there, and then the pi is going to cancel here, so you end up with 
2000 all over r. And we can write that as this way, 2 pi r squared plus 2,000 r to the negative 1, which sets us up nicely to take the first derivative and put it equal to 0. So I'm going to do s prime, which is going to be, ready, 2 times 2 is 4 pi r, right? And this is going to be minus 2,000 r to the negative 2. So let's rewrite that, and well, we're going to put it equal to 0, and I'm going to rewrite it and bring the r squared down here. So I have 4 pi r, I'm going to move this over to this side, is going to equal 2,000 over r squared. Okay? Now, cross multiply, so I have 4 pi r cubed equals 2,000. All right, and 4 and pi are our constants, okay? So if I divide by 4 pi, I have r cubed equals, and 2,000 divided by 4 is 500. So it's really 500 all over pi, all right? And then you're going to raise each side to the 1 third, or cube root it, same difference. So r is going to equal roughly 5.42, and we're talking centimeters. So the radius of this can has to be 5.42 centimeters, okay? So, so far that's what we have for our radius. Now, how do I find the height? Well, the height is way back up here. We said the height was 1,000 over pi r squared h, so I'm actually going to plug it back into that other blue equation here. So the height is going to equal 1,000 over pi r squared equals 1,000 over pi 5.42 is roughly 10.84 centimeters. So it looks like to find a can that has the least material that will help um, still have the same one liter volume is going to be have a radius of 5.42 centimeters and a height of 10. Now, before we go further, we always have to check. So let's do our, we solve for R, so we're going to do our, our, our S prime, excuse me. We're going to do our S prime bar. And we found R to be 5.42. So where do we go back to check it out? Well, this one is a little trickier because you got S prime to be here, so you can try it right here to plug it back in. So let me use a different color so you know what we're doing. You can plug it back in right here. Or if you need to see, we've had put it equal to zero. So this one's, it's a little harder this way, but you could look at it here too to see where it looks for. So if I go to the left of five and I plug it back into this, you're going to notice that I get negative numbers. If I go to the right, we'll say 6 or 7. If I plug that in here, I'm going to get positive numbers. So this does show you that this is a min, so we did it correctly. Now, this is kind of cool, this little um, graph here, because it kind of shows you. If I had a tall, thin can right here, okay, and we're, we're graphing the radius to the uh, surface area. Notice how what happens is the minimum is down here when the radius is at um, 5.42. And they just left it in this type of form. But isn't that what we came up with right here? It's the same thing. So that is 5.42. It shows that that is the minimum surface area. You can make a can, but you'd have more surface area. So if you're a company that's looking to either um, make it where our, that you, they don't want to spend as much paper for the label or even the tin for the can. So that's the end of that problem.